Hello, my name is Zoe Esplin Wright, and this is a presentation about SQL keywords, specifically the insert, update, delete, and select keywords. So first of all, let's talk about what are SQL keywords. They are words defined in the SQL standard, and they're used with identifiers and constants, which we'll talk about a little bit later, in order to construct an SQL statement. Some of them are mandatory and others are optional. And there's two different kinds, and it is DDL and DML. We're going to be talking about DML, which stands for Data Manipulation Language. And that is what the four of these are, insert, update, delete, and select. So that's what we're talking about today. And the Data Manipulation Language keywords are used to manage data within tables and columns. And this means that they're not actually changing the table structure. They're just modifying, or in the case of the select keyword, um, selecting table contents. So again, it doesn't change the table structure, but we're working with the data within the tables. So the first one we're going to talk about is the insert statement. And this statement creates one or more new rows and it inserts the row and its data into the existing table. It contains two different lists which are separated by commas and surrounded by parentheses. We'll look at those in just a second. The first list identifies the columns where the information will go, and the second list contains the contents, constants excuse me, to be inserted in the corresponding columns. And the number of con columns and constants must be the same, otherwise an error will be the result. So, Let's take a look at an example here. So in order to insert one row of data, this is what we have. Insert into dogs, which is the name of our example table right here. And so that's just defining the name of the table. And then in parentheses, we have name, age, and gender, which are these three columns. And then values being specified are Charlie. And if it's a value that's not a number, it has to be within these um, uh, you know, within apostrophes. So we have Charlie, and then four as the age, and M for gender. So those are the values being entered, and as you can see, this is the result. Enters Charlie into the name, four under age, and M under gender. So for our second example for insert, this is to insert two or more rows of data. And not all types of SQL are um, able to support this, but um, for the ones that are allowed, we'll talk about this. So in order to insert more than one row of data, you can just have multiple different value sets in a row separated by a comma. Um, so for types of SQL where it's not available, you would just create um, a whole new uh, statement and separate those by semicolons. But where it is allowed, it's easier to just do it this way, and you can do that for however many are needed to be added. So as we can see, that's the result here. We have none, and it adds both of those rows of data. The next keyword we'll be discussing is update. An update changes the data contained in the table, but again, it does not alter the table structure itself. And the update statement contains the following clauses. First, update defines the table to be updated, and the next one is set, which defines column and data to be changed, and where will specify which row it's going to be applied to. So our example here, we can see in order to update a column on one row of data, you specify update dogs, again that's the table name, and then set age to five, where name equals Charlie. So we're going to change the age here where the name equals Charlie. So here it was four and it's changed to five. And it didn't change it on our other rows of data because we specified only where the name equals Charlie. And on our second example, we removed the where clause. So this will just update the table dogs um, to make the age five on all instances of this column. So that is going to be obviously less specific and where the where clause will help us be more specified with what's going to be changed, but sometimes this would be useful as well. And next we'll talk about delete. 
delete removes an entire row and its data from the table. However, again, it does not alter the table structure. The WHERE clause defines which rows will be deleted, and if no row is specified, all rows and their data will be removed, meaning that the entire table will be emptied of content. So it is important um, to define the row that is going to be deleted or multiple rows, unless you want all of the content to be deleted. So our example for the delete keyword is, as you can see here, in order to delete a row of data, we'll say delete from dogs, the table, where name equals Daisy. So we're specifying that this is the row we want to be deleted. And as you can see here, this will be the result. And it just removes that row of data. So the last keyword we're going to discuss is select. And the select statement is a true query, unlike some of the others. It retrieves information from the database rather than changing anything within the tables or the database. And when the select query is run, it results in a table or rather a tabular result set. So it's not creating a new table in the database, it's just giving us our information in the form of a table. The clauses are, first of all, the two mandatory clauses, select, which defines what will be retrieved, and from, which defines where it will be retrieved from. There are several other optional clauses, including where, group by, having, and order by. You can see all of their purposes here. And here are our examples for select. So to select data from a single column, all you have to do is select age, which is the column name, from dogs, which is the table name again. And to select data from more than one column, all you'll do is add commas between the different column names from the table. Thanks for watching my video about SQL keywords, insert, update, delete, and select.